This is 7 National News and in our top story, the Reading Nation campaign concluded on Wednesday, exceeding its target of 5 million books to reach over 8.2 million that will be distributed to underprivileged children and students in Arab and Muslim countries. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President, Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, who launched the project as this year's Ramadan initiative, made the announcement on his official Twitter account. He stated that as we have entered the last 10 days of Ramadan, we conclude today our Reading Nation Ramadan campaign with 8.2 million books. The books will open wide doors of hope for millions of students and refugees in need. They embody the divine message that we are truly a Reed Nation. He then ended thanking everyone who had supported the initiative and stated that Ramadan will always be a month of charity and the UA is and will always remain a generous nation and a global capital of benevolence. The campaign team has also raised the number of beneficiary libraries from 2,000 to 3,500. The Emirates Red Crescent distributed 500,000 books to Syrian and Iraqi refugees in Kurdistan in the first week, while 500,000 books were dedicated to Syrian refugees in the Emirati Jordanian camp in the first phase, to be followed by 2 million books to refugee camps, half of them in Iraq and the other half in Jordan. The ECS also announced that it will distribute 100,000 books to a number of public libraries over in Yemen. The Dubai Health Authority is urging Dubai residents to plan vaccinations two weeks in advance of any travel in order to help their effectiveness. Dr. Faya Sarkal, the Deputy Director of the DHA Travellers Clinics, was quoted saying that they are warning travellers that they can't guarantee the effectiveness of a vaccine unless it is administered at least a month to a minimum of two weeks prior to the date of travel, and they even recommend that people postpone their travel dates if not. She added that the DHA provides a full range of services for travellers at their two full-fledged travellers clinics, which are inside the Nad Al Hamar and Al Basha primary health care centres, which are a hub for pre-travel medical services, including vaccinations, risk assessment and travel advice. The pre-travel advice takes into account the destination, length of stay, medical and vaccine history, current medical state and mandatory and recommended vaccines for the destination. The Preventive Med Medicine Department has announced the continuation of work at all its branches from July the 3rd and 4th during the Eid al-Fitr holiday from 9am until 2pm. According to a local daily, this comes within the Ministry of Health's intent to meet the needs of customers who use the service. Meanwhile, the Sharjah Medical Zone announced that al Gubaybah Preventative Medicine Centre during the holiday will receive patients on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and from 9 p.m. until 1 a.m. On Monday, it will work from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., while the centre of the industrial area will work on Sunday and Monday from 8 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. The centres of Dade, Kalba, Corfican and Deba Al Hassan will work on Sunday and Monday from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Quoted in the report, officials from the Ministry of Health stated that health centres and clinics will continue to provide medical tests for expats in preventative medicine centres during the Eid holiday on Sunday and Monday in order to facilitate residence and work procedures. The work in the centres will be resumed after the Eid holiday according to the official work time. And continuing with the Eid al-Fitr holiday, the Sharjah municipality has announced that paid parking slots in the Emirate will be free to the public from July the 2nd until the 8th. Officials added that usual paid parking will resume as of Saturday, July the 9th. Atef al Razuni, the director of public parking at the municipality, made the announcement, stating that the step comes within the intention of the municipality to provide comfort to the public, as well as smoothing movement to residents and visitors during the holiday. In the meantime, Hanan Jassim Jabba, the head of public parks activities at the Sharjah municipality, confirmed that all parks and gardens in the Emirate are ready to receive crowds during the Eid al-Fitr holiday. Education chiefs over at ADEC have let go of more than 340 teachers from schools over in Abu Dhabi. 
The Abu Dhabi Education Council revealed that 272 teachers lost their jobs because their skills no longer fitted into the curriculum. ADEC was quoted in a local daily saying that they were made redundant due to changes in the school curriculum as per the new school model, and they were no longer required to teach in their areas of speciality. They added that another 71 teachers were fired for failing to meet performance standards. Those dismissed made up more than 3% of ADEC's teaching staff in its 255 schools and were given two months' notice. The restructuring eliminated the hum humanities stream and introduced a new curriculum in which STEM, which is science, technology, engineering and maths, made up nearly 50% of the subjects. ADEC also said that this month it had hired 548 English language teachers for the next academic year. According to research from the UA University of Al Ain, 40% of children and 33% of adults in the UAE suffer from allergic rhinitis due to the dusty and humid climate, which leads to clogging air conditioning units, which can affect the quality of air if not maintained on a regular basis. Other studies found that those working in air conditioned environments take far more sick days and are more likely to have hospital stays. Clogged ACs can also lead to asthma attacks and can cause the very serious Legionnaire's disease. A survey was conducted last year by online portal MoveSook.com and facilities manager Imdad and revealed that at least 8 of 10 of their respondents complained of having faced at least two frequent maintenance issues, such as sewerage and foul-smelling ducts. The parts of the AC units that stay consistently moist, mainly cooling coils and drip pans, are nurturing environments for microorganisms, including the ones that cause flu and the common cold. Field experts say that the importance of maintaining and thoroughly cleaning AC units cannot be underestimated. They also advise not to ignore any visible mould, growth inside a hard surface, ducts or on other components of the cooling systems because it could mean that the ducts are clogged with excessive amounts of dust and debris or particles that are released into the home from the supply registers which could lead to more health risks. Everyone uh, talks about uh, drinking uh, liters of water, three to four liters of water. Uh, but you know, we are actually uh, breathing approximately 15,000 of liters of air every day. So it's really that much importance. Uh, cleaning the AC uh, units is extremely important. Uh, otherwise, it's going to affect the quality of the air you're going to breathe, which will bring, uh, you know, a kind of sickness, allergies, asthmas into families. So it's really very, very important to clean and make sure your ACs are clean, not just clean, also in, uh, disinfected. Uh, at Sani Service, we recommend uh, our customer to do once every two years a deep cleaning and disinfection service. And of course, every three to four months, you need to maintain the filter cleaning, also the making sure the coils are still maintained well, disinfected. Uh, by this way, you can easily wait for uh, two years to do the major service. Rather than just doing the cleaning, we also brought a hospital grade disinfection service. So. Uh, instead of just cleaning the filters or the basic components of the AC, we decided to provide a service where we clean out 100% the entire system, then we use 100% uh, natural products or where there is no chemical or alcohol in it. Uh, we use a product called Biosanitizer, which we use to disinfect the entire AC system. And finally, it's been announced that Dubai Summer Surprises will kick off across the Emirates on July the 9th, offering 43 days of shopping, dining and entertainment. The 19th edition of the DSS will offer diverse events and activities designed to create a city-wide celebration. Throughout the 43 days, visitors can also enjoy world-class entertainment and win up to 1.5 million dirhams in prizes, including 12 Infinity Q50 cars in the Shop and Win promotion run by the Dubai Shopping Malls Group, which will hold raffle draws during the first three days of Eid al-Fitr. Families also stand a chance at winning in the Eat and Play promotion, which will offer instant gift vouchers to visitors who dine in participating restaurants located in the malls. Leila Mohammed Suhail, the Chief Executive Officer of Dubai Festivals and Retail Establishment, was quoted saying that from world-class performances and events to interactive experiences, 
Fabulous dining options and generous retail deals. There is something for everyone this DSS. During the festival, the Fashion Forward Summer pop-up will take place in Mall of the Emirates between July the 19th and the 25th, and also in Murdiff City Centre between August the 3rd and the 9th. The Bricks at Box Park will also take place for the second year in a row from July the 6th to August the 20th. Meanwhile, the Jungle Book live show will take place in City Walk from August the 14th to the 20th.